Hey everybody, Coach Dan here from The Run Experience. We talk a ton about heart rate training here at TRE, and we do that because it's a wonderful, efficient, and effective way to get the best bang for your buck out of your training time. It's also a really good way to stop you from getting injured by doing heart rate training properly. But there are a few aspects of heart rate training that deserve a bit of a deeper dive, and that's what we're doing today. Today we are talking about cardiac drift. It's what happens when maybe that heart rate data is not making a whole lot of sense to you. You're not sure what it means. Your heart rate's running a little bit high during a run. I'll tell you why that's happening and what you can do about it here. So before we dig into cardiac drift, there are three definitions you need to know. Once we have these three definitions understood, it's gonna be a lot easier to have this conversation. The first one's pretty easy, heart rate, right? So that's the number of beats per minute that your heart is doing. The second one is stroke volume. That's the volume of blood being pumped by your left ventricle, that left pumpy bit of your heart. The third one's cardiac output. That's the volume of blood pumped by your heart in one minute. Once we've got those three definitions understood, we can talk about what's happening when we talk about cardiac drift. Your cardiovascular system is responsible for bringing things to your muscles that it needs. That's nutrients and oxygen mostly, but also taking things away from those muscles that it doesn't need or that's a sort of byproducts from use. Those metabolites is what we call them. Now, the cardiovascular system is doing that all the time. Right now, while you're sitting there watching this YouTube video, it's happening. But as you exert yourself, specifically when you run, your cardiovascular system needs to do that work much, much faster and ideally more efficient. That's where this comes in. So if we wanna get really technical about it, and we do, cardiac drift can be defined as the upward drift of your heart rate over time, coupled with a progressive decline in stroke volume and the continued maintenance of cardiac output. Hmm, your heart rate goes up even though you're not working any harder. That's because your stroke volume, how much blood's being pushed through that left ventricle, goes down a little bit. And so it's gotta work harder to do the same amount of oxygen providing to your muscles. Look, if you wanna totally nerd out on this, I've decided to put the articles I use to reference this here in the notes. And so you can check all those out. Some of them are sort of Google Scholar style things. But our friends at Polar, the cool watch company, have got some great articles on this as well. And we're gonna to link to those also to make sure you've got all the source documentation that you need. But here's what you need to know. Exercise physiologists have done a ton of research on this, specifically in cyclists, to find out what happens and why, and here's what they figured out. Cardiac drift happens most especially when your core body temperature and skin temperature increase and you show signs of dehydration. So, you're running, right? Let's put sort of where the rubber meets the road here. You're running based on heart rate, but your heart rate is increased and you don't know why. You're used to having a certain heart rate, your MAF heart rate, which you can find in other videos here on TRE, but you're above MAF today, even though you're at what you'd consider to be your easy pace. Why is that? Well, it could be because of cardiac drift, and that's being caused by either you're too warm, right, it's a hot day outside, or maybe you're overdressed, which is often the case for me, or it's because you're dehydrated. And so what should you do on that day? Well, on that particular day, you should do what you should always do if you're not feeling great to run, or if you've got some physiological signs that things aren't going great, you should slow down, take it easy on that day. You don't need to quit your run, certainly don't bail out, but slow your pace until your heart rate's at that target heart rate. And for the next time you go out, keep in mind those two factors that have been correlated with cardiac drift. That's increased body skin temperature and dehydration. So get your hydration strategy in check. Make sure you're hydrated before you head out. So you can do that with an electrolyte drink or just a little extra water to make sure you're set. Or if you're like me and you're gonna be spending a lot of time out here on the trail, do it with a vest. Make sure you've got some hydration with you so you can keep hydrated as you keep moving. The second thing is to really think about what type of kit, what clothes you're gonna wear when you're out. If you're finding that you're overheated, and I do this all the time, I overdress because I hate being cold out on the trail, but then I don't wanna carry the extra sweater that I put on. So instead I just leave it on and I sweat through it. This is fine, it's not a big deal, except if you're a heart rate training athlete like I am, it means that I'm showing really bad heart rate data for that day because I'm overheated. My heart rate keeps going up even though I'm at a constant pace. Doesn't mean my fitness is suffering, it means that I've made some choices that day that stopped this from happening. So that's what cardiac drift is, that's why it matters, and that's how to handle it. Stick around here at The Run Experience as we continue to do these nerdy deep dives into all sorts of running things.